Hey, Yolo Rolls here, and welcome back to Professor Layton and the Unwound Future. So let's go ahead and continue from where we left off. And, um, I don't even have to do a recap because I already know that the game will do one for me. Our story so far. Layton and Luke remain mystified by the local citizen citizenries terrified reactions to the professors had. I've never seen that word before. While working their way through town, the pair receives a second letter from Luke of the Future. Following the instructions in the letter, the pair heads to a hospital located on Auckland Lane. Okay, yeah, last time we talked to this wannabe mobster goon over here who just threatened us with a puzzle. So let's talk to this lady here. Good day, young lady. Can you tell us if this building here is a hotel? Oh, good day, gentlemen. If you've come looking for a hotel, you've come to the right place. Hotel Duke is one of London's finest and most famous. Will you do us the honor of staying with us? For a famous hotel, you keep an awfully low profile. This is the first I've heard of Hotel Duke. Well, there's a simple explanation for that. You see, we're a hotel for ladies and gentlemen with discriminating tastes. What do you mean by that? I can't say we're as popular with the primary school crowd, little boy. Oh, God. <laughs> our friend here doesn't take kindly to your besmirching the good name of our hotel, Luke. Well, young lady, thank you for your help. Okay, so yes, we have confirmation that this is the hotel that we're looking for. Also, it says on the top screen, here, go here, in case you can't figure it out on your own. There's something to the right that I kind of want to look at. Never mind. <laughs> it would be wise to stop in at a hotel Duke before pressing on. Okay, we have a plot wall blocking us, so let's go in here. Welcome to Hotel Duke, one of London's finest and most esteemed establishments. Oh, hello again. Hee <laughs> hee. I ran ahead and took the liberty of preparing a suite for you two. May I help you with your bags? I don't think we have any. Oh, well, that was nice of you and all, but we just wanted to ask directions to the railway station. Perhaps you might reconsider staying with us. You are tourists here, are you not? As you can see, Hotel Duke is centrally located. Stay with us and you'll spend less time traveling and more time having fun in the city. Thanks for the offer, but we're not really here to have fun. <laughs> you do make a compelling argument, young lady. Location is everything. We'll take a room and directions to the closest underground railway station, if you please. Please, sir, none of that young lady stuff. Call me Becky. Hehe. <laughs> oh, and could I please ask you to sign the hotel guest book? Um, Professor, are we really going to stay here? Indeed we are. Somehow, you and I have managed to get ourselves lost in an unfamiliar area. As Becky noted, having a central location to return to while we're here could prove very useful. Okay, you have a point. And that also means that there are hint coins to be found somewhere, maybe. These flowers smell so good that I almost want to eat them. What an odd thing to say. There's one. A brightly lit room like this helps make one feel at home. There we go. Bell. Okay. Look, this teddy bear has come to welcome us. Oh, that's a teddy bear? I could not tell what that was. I honestly thought this was an easel or something. Let's see. Can you click on everything? So I was playing this on a 3DS, or I guess this would be a 2DS or something. Just rapidly tap the screen until something happened. Oh, whoops. I have here one of our finest suites for you, but please sign the hotel guest book first. Okay, thank you. I guess we'll talk to this woman snoozing here. And we have a puzzle. Oh, goodness me, hello. You'll have to forgive me. I didn't even see you two come in. Hello, Margaret. Welcome to Hotel Duke, home of its temporary service and the world's best breakfast. That's quite a claim. I am Margaret, the hotel manager. Should you need anything, please don't hesitate to let me know. Thanks, but what about lunch and dinner? Those aren't the best, the world's best as well? 
Ah, it seems we have a little gourmand here. Rest easy, young man. For our lunch, we offer sandwiches on fresh baked pillowy soft bread. And if you enjoy a good roast, I suggest you order in for dinner, as ours is the best in the city. You know, Professor, I've changed my mind. I quite like this place. Let's stay here. <laughs> yes, our sandwiches tend to have that effect on people. Now, if I could just... Oh, dear. What's wrong? I've got four pens here, but I think only one of them has any ink in it. I didn't bother to throw them away because the weeds basket is too far away. <laughs> Thirteen. Pick the pen. Thirty pick rods. Okay, so... Difficult one. Only one of the four pins shown below actually works. Here are some clues to help you identify it. All four pins currently have the wrong colored caps. Thank you for that. When assembled correctly, all four pins have one white section. The working pen is to the left of the one that should have the green cap. Choose the working pen, A, B, C, or D. Okay, so... Can I move these? No, I can't move these. Okay. So, let's see... Hmm. Actually, this one's a little bit tough because... Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. Where, where you would get tripped up on this one is you would think this cap goes with this pen. So that is incorrect. Because, like they said, all four pins currently have the wrong color cap. Um, so, assuming the body of each pen here is the clue, this one should go here, and this one should go here. This white one should go over here. So that's wrong too, because then this one would match here, and we've already been told that all of them are wrong, so they all have to be switched around. Hmm. When assembled correctly, all four pins have one white section. Okay, so that's the second part of the clue. Which means... Hmm. hmm that is a tricky one, because this one... Has, because at least these three already have white segments in them. But this one does not, which means I believe this cap is supposed to go with this pin, so that the upper part of it is now white. I really don't want to use any more hint coins, but I might have to. Hmm. I'm going to use a hint coin, because I'm stumped. For starters, remember that the working pan is to the left of the one that should have the green cap. There are three possibility for which... There are three possible arrangements for which this can be true, having the green as the second, the third, or the fourth one. Next, remember that when assembled correctly, all four pens have one white section. The only pen without a white section is currently C, so you know the white cap definitely belongs to pen C. Okay. So, this one has to go here, is what it's saying.
They don't want the salt head. So the order can be Wait, what did the sin say? Blue, blue, white, green, or blue, green, white, blue. Except it can't be this first one because that means that this one this one would stay to the would stay the same as this one and said that that's incorrect. So it has to be this one, which means that C is the one that's the working pen, I think. Hmm, how about this? Got it. I wish I didn't have to waste tent coins on Phew, that, but... That's a relief. Incredible. <laughs> pen C is correct. Oh god, the puns in this game. Puzzle 13, pick the pen, is now in your puzzle and Ah, oh, that's the one! Now oh, if you'd be so kind as to sign in. Very well. You're all set now, Professor Layton. Oh, and you must be Luke. Becky will show you to your quarters. Okay, let's go ahead and go upstairs. What, we have a puzzle with you two? Why? I'll be showing you to your quarters now, Professor Layton. My name is Becky. Should you need, to need anything, don't hesitate to call on me. We know your name, Becky. You gave it to us earlier, remember? And I'm Luke. Oh, and there's no need to be so formal. All that politeness makes me feel awkward. Shh! My grain is a stickler for formal service. I need to stay polite while we're in earshot. Oh, uh, gotcha. Now, if you two gentlemen are ready, let me escort you to your quarters. Right this way! This is a nice room. This room has the best view in the hotel. You lucky ducks totally scorned. Did you hear that, Professor? We lucked out. Yeah, though I guess it's not really luck now that I think about it. See, ever since we moved the hotel to this new location, we haven't had a single guest. So Hotel Duke used to be located somewhere else? It's kind of a sensitive subject, so I'd rather not talk about it anymore. I hope you understand. Say, it was really something the way you solved that puzzle my granny threw at you. Yeah, I'm pretty big on puzzles. Me too. Tell you what, solve a puzzle for me and I'll tell you two how to get to the railroad station. Why do we have to jump through hoops for everything? Okay, here we go. Puzzle number 14. Find the station. We're 20 pick rats, so it's not as difficult as the last one. Woman is looking for a subway station, but the map she has is missing the station's location. What an awful map. However, the map does have one hint written on the back. To get from the flower shop to the subway station, mimic the path that the students take from the school to the library. Smaller squares are buildings. The pencil icon denotes the school, while the book icon denotes the library. Circle the location of the subway station. Okay, so... Mimic the path that the students take from the school to the library. Um... So let's bring up the menu. So, let's see... I assume that whatever side these green boxes, which I guess are representing the buildings, are pushed up against, that's where the front entrance of it would be, which means the front entrance of the school starts here. So, to get to the library, kids would go this way.
and we want to go there from the flower shop to find the subway. I would end up out of hint coins at this point, but I need a hint. So I'm functioning to draw the path to library that's what you need. Well, that was a waste. I already know that game, but what I'm confused by is how do I know which way they would go? Because you can go this way, or you can go the way that I dictated earlier. Maybe like this, so this would be the space that I'm looking for, maybe? Please redraw your circle. Uh, um, What do you want from me, game? No, this is not the way, the game's way of telling me that this is wrong. I just can't draw a circle, apparently. The green squares are options for where the subway would be. Yeah, I need another hint. Think about what you tell someone when giving them directions. Go out the door, turn left at the first intersection, turn right. Something like that, right? Uh, go out the building, make a left. The first intersection, turn left. Then make a right. I need the memo for this, actually. So, go out the door. The first intersection, we go left. Then we go right. Then we go left. Go straight. And I'll tell the library will be on your right. So, got the building. Building. The first intersection, make a left. Second intersection, make a right. And make a left, and go straight. So, this is where it will be. I think. 
think. If I've done this correctly, which uh, it's very, very possible that I have not, but let's submit that. Hmm, how about this? Got it. Nice. Phew, that's a relief. Good work navigating. If you take the route the students take to the library, only start at the flower shop, uh, you end up with the map above. Okay, that's not exactly what I did, but I still got the right answer anyway. There are a couple of other routes you could take, but they all end, the, end at the same destination. Cool. You got the girl sticker for picture book one. Nicely done. Okay, so you're trying to get to the Underground Railway, right? It's not too far. Just keep going east once you leave the hotel. Soon you'll pop out onto Flatstone Street. Head north, and the station will be on your right. Oh, that's why we had to solve that puzzle, because she has to give us directions. Thanks, Becky. I think we can manage from here. Oh, but wait! One more thing! Hmm? What's that? It's a bit of a detour, but you should head through the arcade north of here on your way out. There's a restaurant there that's just scrumptious. Of course, it's not as delicious as the fare we serve here, but it's good, you know. The arcade? You mean that area to the west of the hotel? When we walked by last time, there was an odd little boy blocking the way north. Oh, you must be talking about Max. He pretty much does whatever I tell him to do. So I'll just let him know that Becky sent you and he'll let you right through. <laughs> good to know. Well, we might as well go through the arcade and see a bit more of the area. Okay, cool. Ooh, there are hint coins to be had on the screen. Maybe. Yep, there are. There's one. Ah, the cup that cheers. Let's go once we've had some tea. Dibs on this bed. This bed looks quite comfortable. Whoa. What? Look at this box of matches here. It has the hotel's name on it. I had no idea there was a puzzle in here. Tell me, Luke, are you in the mood for a sublime puzzle involving matches? You bet I am. Number 15, Box of Matches. Ooh, it's a difficult one. The two people shown below are talking about how many boxes of matches there are. The person on top, A, is looking down from above, and the person below, B, is looking at them from one side. At most, how many boxes are there? Oh, I see. So they're looking at a box of matches. The person on top says that there are, I need to minimum real quick, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, So this person is like, there are 10 matches, and this person is like, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there are 8 matches. So, how many boxes are there actually? Hmm. Now let's see. So there are one, two, three, see here's the problem. The person who's looking at it from the side, they can't see the matches that are on this side of um, of where the uh, person over here is looking. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, I see. I'm thinking about it wrong. The person... This person is looking at them from this side. So they're they're looking from, from this side. That's why there are... I can see four... And then the stack of three, and one random one on top. So, let's see, so there are 
four rows, and you have some of the matches stacked on top of each other. So the question is, at most, how many boxes are there? Which is what is tripping me up for this one. I can see why it's 30 pickles. This one's a mind vendor, too. I was asking if 20 is the most. No. It's not. I need another hint. I don't have to waste hint coins on the super hint. I'm completely stumped. Suppose B is looking at A's top down image from the top. If you count them up as there is in the previous hint and there are more than 20, that's your answer. Now all you need to do is count. So that would mean looking at it from this direction. So there would be two, four, six, eight here, three, six here. One, two, four, six, 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 twelve, thirteen, twenty one. That's not the correct answer, but I just don't know. This one's as good as solved. Wow, okay, wow. I knew it. Well, at least I only got it wrong once. Correct, there are 21 boxes at most. Wouldn't they just, like, you know, disassemble the rows and actually count the boxes? You got it, my boy. I must say, I'm quite impressed with you. Thanks, Professor. Cool. Let's see if I can find any more hint coins around here. Please give me more hint coins. I need to replace the ones I just lost. Okay, it looks like that, that's all that there is to be had. Um, I do want to check something though. Puzzle index. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, just wanted to make sure that I've, um, I haven't missed anything. It's Green Hospital. Yeah, you guys can read that for yourself. I'm not going to read it. And we have the picture book. I might just leave the picture book stuff alone. I'm just getting rid of the flashing new symbol on it. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, back out. Oh, young man, may I have a moment? What do you want, Margaret? Hmm? Are you talking to me? Who else? I am indeed. Er, Luke, was it? It sure is. What can I do for you? Oh, it's nothing terribly important. It's just been a while since we had a youngster like yourself here. That's why I thought I'd welcome you with a gift. A gift? A present for me? 
That's right. From what I hear, these are all the rage with the local children. Oh, it's one of those toy cars. Do you have one too, Becky? Me? Nah, I'm not into kitty toys like that. Jeez, Becky, you're so mean. Oh. I mean, not that there's anything the matter with having an interest in toys. Actually, that car is the perfect toy for a boy your age, so have fun with it. Sure, I'll try to anyhow. <laughs> Don't look so glum, Luke. Collecting miniature cars is a perfectly respectable hobby for a gentleman. Yeah, I guess the professor's got a point there. See, I told you. The toy gar the toy car mini game has been added to the trunk. Hmm. You got a new course for the toy car, Daily Stroll. I do not remember all these extra features. Maybe I just never looked at them. You received the latest and greatest in car toy in toy cars from the hotel manager Margaret. The toy car mini game has been added to the trunk. Use your wits to pilot your car through a number of twisty obstacle laden tracks. I guess I can check that out before ending the episode. So what exactly is this? Pick up all the items on the track and lead your car to the goal by placing tiles in the correct spots. Oh, it's one of these games. The number and types of tiles available for you to use changes with each track. Drag the tile from your inventory box to the desired location to set it down. Each square of the track can accommodate one tile. You can only place tiles on standard terrain such as grass or sand. Tiles can't be placed on squares with bridges, switches, trees, rocks, or water. When a car rolls over a jump tile, it will leap over a single square no matter what the square looks like. When the car passes over a tile with an arrow on it, the car will move in the direction of the arrow, obviously. Once the car has passed over a tile, that tile will vanish from the board. You can change the initial direction of your car by tapping it before it starts. Your car can only cross over drawbridges if there are no gaps. Raise and lower drawbridges by rolling over the yellow switch on the track. Tap clear to return all the tiles you've placed to your inventory. When all your tiles are in place, tap go to start your car. If you've set up your tiles correctly, your car will zip around the track and reach the goal. Just remember that reaching the goal alone isn't enough. If you don't pick up every item scattered around the track along the way, you won't clear the track. If your car hits any obstacles along the way or drives off the track, you'll have to start over. There are a total of 10 tracks. As you play through the game, you'll collect more tracks. To pick up every track, make sure you solve every puzzle. When you've conquered every track the game has to offer, something good will happen. Okay. Sure, let's attempt Daily Stroll. Tap the car to change the car's starting direction. I know that already. The secret to a lifelong... The secret to a long life is plenty of sleep and exercise. Speaking of exercise, let me show you the route I take every day on my afternoon walk. Collect all of the flags. So let's see. I have no jump tiles. Let's see. If I have the car immediately go down, collect this. Actually, no, that doesn't work. Say I have the car go this way, it'll collect that flag. Have it go down left, and go up, go this way again, go up. What just happened? Okay, so this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, Go 
down, go this way, go up. Go to the right. Go down. Go left. I forget, did it say that I had to use all of the arrangement tiles? I don't remember if it said if I did or not, but this works for solving this. Well done! Congratulations, you completed the course daily stroll. Cool. And that's all that it is for now until we get the others. Cool. And we're still missing one piece of our uh, trunk here. But I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. Since you see, I've collected 39 hint coins so far. Um, I don't really. I know that there are 300 total. I'm pretty sure I missed some already, and some of them can be missed permanently. But I've found and solved all of the puzzles. I wish I didn't have to use hint coins for them, but I will if I'm really stumped. Sorry if you wanted to see me go through the game without using any. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like. Also, be sure to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter, as well as support my Patreon. All three links will be in the description below. And subscribe for more. And if you are subscribed or a new subscriber right now, be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified when I upload videos. This is Viola Rules, signing off. Talk to you later.